my place as a pastor, a minister over your life is not as powerful as your husband's place. As unbeliever as the man is, as long as he has not driven you away, he still has the responsibility to exercise that headship, even if he knows he has it or not. So, yes, there's an apostolic calling on your life, no doubt, but that man has to bless it. In, we, even if he has a bottle of star on his left hand, <coughs> don't fight the bottle, just receive. <laughs> receive the blessing. As long as you are operating from a covered position, no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. The easiest way to be wounded as a woman is to take off without cover. You will come back with the scars that will not heal in your lifetime. Welcome to Apostles on Fire TV. Here you'll be getting powerful video clips that will steer you up for a glorious work with God. Enjoy the video. Thank you. For the husband is the head of the wife even as Christ is the head of the church. I hope you know what this scripture is talking about in the part A of the scripture is what we call the principle of headship. Principle of headship. And there is a temptation for you to think that headship is synonymous with male <laughs> until you get employed in public service and then the head of your unit is a woman. It's, it's quite humbling when you find yourself in such situation. I was there before, uh, a man. Yeah, yeah, it's a terrible place to be, actually. So uh, you must understand, be broad enough to understand that headship is not synonymous with male. Right? But you see, in the marriage institution, God gave the responsibility of headship to the man. And for obvious reasons, the, the scripture revealed to us the reason why headship in that context is given to the man. Uh, the reason why God instituted and gave the responsibility of headship to the man, and it's a responsibility, it's not an advantage. Many times I, 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 in the morning, I just look at my wife and say, Kai, you don't have any problem. <laughs> she said, yes, God made her like that because headship is a responsibility. She doesn't know how many things happen. Many provisions that are made available is not her business here, you know. So she, when she sleeps, she sleeps deep. Me, I, my own... <laughs> Now, it's not an advantage. It, it, it's a responsibility. And when God issues a responsibility, he gives you the grace to be able to accomplish the demands of the responsibility. Now, the reason why, one of the reasons why God gave headship in the marriage institution to the man is because the Bible says that it was not Adam that was deceived. It was Eve that was deceived. So Eve's error was deception. Adam's error was rebellion. The judgment that came to Adam on the account of his error was different from the judgment that came to Eve on the account of her error. According to the wiring of a woman, it is easy for her to be deceived. If you have been in the deliverance ministry, if you are, if you are going to be frank, I will... Open up if you, are, if you want to, us to be frank. If you have been in the deliverance ministry for a while, you will find out that you, be, you are likely to be casting out more demons from ladies than from men. And that is because it is easier because of their wiring for them to be deceived. So Adam was not deceived. Adam was right there when Satan was trying to manipulate his wife he did not intervene, he was just there. And when the woman was deceived into eating of the fruit of that tree that God forbade them from eating, when she gave him, he also ate. That was, he was awake and aware. His own crime was rebellion. By wiring alone, because it is more difficult 
to deceive men because of their wiring. That's one of the reasons why God gave the responsibility of headship to men. Are you there? Even though women are called just like we are called, women are anointed just like we are anointed, but women are designed to operate from a covered position. Are you there? From a covered position. When you find a woman operating, maybe prophesying, preaching, an evangelist on a platform, the first question you need to ask is, who, who, what is the authority behind this woman? Because she's supposed to be operating from where? Who is the authority behind this one? And as long as we cannot verify that, it is not advisable to remain there. Hmm? Because they are supposed to operate that anointing, operate their ministry from the covering that a man gives. So it can be a mighty evangelist that shakes the world, but the authority that empowers her to operate is the authority that should come from a man. All right? So if you come and ask me about my wife's calling and the things that she's doing now, I know the history of those things and I've given her my blessing to do them. So that is what is going to make her indestructible because she's not operating at her own expense. It is easier to be a woman than a man spiritually. You don't understand what I'm talking about. Now, go and check. You will find more widows than widowers. Men die more easily. Oh, this my class is not... <laughs> you, are not you are not with me. You are not with me. The consequences of a woman's action is not the woman. The consequences of the woman's action is on the person that gave her the license to operate that way. So it's easier to be a woman than to be a man because if you commit a blunder spiritually, it is the person that gave you the authority to operate that is going to suffer from your error. You notice that, are you there? Yeah. The woman went and ate something and gave the man. When God showed up, God did not even ask the woman. He said, Ada. The consequences of her actions, he has to bear the burden because he's the one that gave her the authority to, to interact with Satan. He was there. He did not stop her. When Satan came, it was a woman he engaged because Satan is not, he always violates the divine order. When God came, it was the man he called. So you are going to bear the responsibility of what your wife is doing. Even if you claim that you are not aware, oh, you, are, you don't understand spirituality. You cannot make that claim because she's operating under your authority. So I told you that it's easier to be a woman than a man. Men die faster. What will guarantee your long life as a man is alignment to the principles of God. Alignment. Alignment. And this alignment also involves the activity of your wife. So God will hold you responsible for what your wife is doing. So if a woman is operating and flourishing and she's touching lives, the power behind that woman is the person that gave the woman the authority. The person may not be talking to but is the power that is behind that woman. Are you there? Then in a situation where the woman is the one that has the priesthood and the man is a rolling stone, I know you want to ask, those questions are for Fridays, not for, for Tuesdays. They, 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 they are, are you there? As unbeliever as the man is, as long as he has not driven you away, he still has the responsibility to exercise that headship, even if he knows he has it or not. So, yes, there's an apostolic calling on your life, no doubt. But that man has to bless it. In, we, even if he has a bottle of star on his left hand. 
Don't fight the bottle. Just receive. <laughs> receive the blessing. As long as you are operating from a covered position, no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. The easiest way to be wounded as a woman is to take off without cover. You will come back with the scars that will not heal in your lifetime. You know, I've been a pastor for many years. I've counseled believers, politicians, and kings. In fact, the more influential you are, the more your problems. That is, it, your life is good the way it is, I assure you. If you hear, oh my, the burdens that come from the top. Operate from a covered position. My place as a pastor, a minister over your life is not as powerful as your husband's place. Even though I'm anointed, but there is something called the divine order. Don't just obey the Bible, obey the order. There's, there's a divine order. Many ministers of the gospel today no longer respect the divine order. You know what the consequence of that is? Many people will die before their time. Long life is not just a desire. Long life, are you there? <laughs> It's a proof of compliance to the divine order. If you ask any old man that is like 97 years old, if you ask him, what's the secret? They don't have any vibes. They don't have, don't think you will learn anything from what they will tell you. It is only the scriptures that can reveal it. He has unknowingly operated accurately. If you're going to, long life is a proof of compliance to the divine order. So, the principles that operate between the relationship with Christ and his church are also obtainable in that marriage situation. So, if you know the 14 principles that undergird the relationship of Christ and his church, and you apply those principles in your marriage, those principles are coming from the original, what we are running as marriage here is a replica. The principles are superior to this realm. So when you apply it in this realm, even if your relatives and your in-laws want to scatter that marriage, it cannot be scattered because it is carrying the principles of something that is mystical. Except that witchcraft can defeat that mystical reality that is illustrated in your own practice of marriage, there is nothing that can bring it down. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church. It will interest you to know that the measurement that was used for the kind of love that is needed to keep a marriage, the unit of measurement is as Christ. I know most of you, you know, you loved your wife when you married. That's human love. Human love is not strong enough to push that boat. And human love is going to face a fatal, fatal defeat as the storms begin to come, it will diminish that human love. You will need to operate from another context of love to drive that boat. And most times, are you there? Most times we are not taught, we are not instructed. The definition of this kind of love is sacrifice. It's not just talk. I know women like hearing, oh, you're looking great. <laughs> That's not what moves the boat, even though Keep talking to them. Keep talking. Say you are, this your hair is shining. Oh my God. I'm a master of that. It's shining. 
Hallelujah. They like it. But you see, you, as much as you do that, ensure that you still have the love that is sacrificial. The love that is sacrificial does not make sense. It's senseless. It's not born from the human mind. If you can, that's the covenant love. That even if, though you make me angry, I will not change the fact that I'm still connected to you. Even though you do something terrible, I will not change the fact that our covenant still stands. And this sealed system called marriage, are you there? There is only one thing that can per perforate it. Only one thing that can undo it according to the scripture. And that is immorality. Just in case. Huh? Yes, immorality. That's the only ground that we can consider a divorce from. If there is immorality because it has broken the fundamentals of the love covenant, the blood covenant. Marriage is a blood covenant. It is from life unto death. But when you commit immorality, what you have done, you are tapped into another person's blood. It has invalidated the previous one that you entered. So it's a very, it's a strong ground for exit. However, it is possible that someone can find enlargement in Christ and forgive. Do you understand that? Yeah, you can find enlargement in Christ and forgive. But when you get into marriage, you don't get into marriage with the hope that you will test another woman. Because we have not so learned Christ. It is only that which is illustrated in the principles of Christ that is applicable in that context. Are you, are you with me? Yes. So, as the Lord liveth before whom I stand, by the time I'm taking my last breath, I would not have violated my marriage contract with my wife as the Lord lived. The reason why I say this is because the resources to make it so is in Christ Jesus. And that was what he modeled in the kind of love that he had for the church. It means that there is grace available to make me model that in my relationship with my wife. If you have a marital problem, it means you have a spiritual problem. Yeah, it means you have a problem with Jesus. You are not in perfect alignment with Jesus. That's why aspects of the grace of Jesus is not available in your, in your life to model before your wife. The best, best scale of measuring a believer's compliance to his Lord is checking the way he relates with his wife. Because if Christ begins to grow on your inside, his influence begins to dominate your inside, there are a few indicators that the Bible teaches that will show that indeed Christ is growing on your inside. One of the first indicators that shows that Christ is growing on your inside is generosity. Generosity. You, Christ cannot grow on your inside and you are stingy. No because he was so generous that he gave his life. That's a height of generosity. And in measures and capsules, you are going to give your life to your wife. In measures and in capsules. In measures and in capsules. You are going to fulfill the very example that Jesus fulfilled. Are you with me? So generosity is one of the indicators that indeed he has been conquered by Christ and the Lord Christ is, is, is gaining more grounds of influence over his heart. Don't tell me you are a Christian and you are stingy and stiff. Your bowers of mercy are not open to respond to the need of the other person. Sometimes you don't even need to tell me. Once you walk into my office, I, I know, no, this one has problems. It means, for the Bible says that a good man devises liberal things. That is, he makes plans to help people. When you find stoic Epicureans in the house of God, they have not met with Jesus Christ. They don't know Jesus. It is very cheap to be pious and sanctimonious. Very cheap. 
But no one can deny love when it is revealed through bowels of mercy and liberality. No one can. That's, that's a proof that Christ in you is beginning to gain what? Ground. In your life, we can trace this statement, not my will, but thy be done. Because the first Adam modeled the example of rebellion, the second Adam modeled the example of obedience. So if the second Adam is your master, he will even put you in circumstances where he will break your willpower so that it will be easy for you to yield to him. The most brutal of dealings that God will bring our way are those dealings that weaken the will of a hardened man so that it is easy for him to yield to God. Are you there? Don't just stay in church and think you are doing something. No. Ensure that you are growing in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. The reason why the Bible normally specifies the grace and say the grace in Christ Jesus Thank you for watching. Do well to subscribe, like, share the video to your loved ones so they can receive what God is doing from this platform. You can also follow us on all our social media platforms. We are on Instagram, we are on Facebook, and we are on Twitter. Thank you.